We want to welcome you to the word portion of Lighthouse Church of Benton, Arkansas. We've been in the presence of the Lord. We're continuing in the presence of the Lord. We have Shelly Romero now here to sing and introduce the word to us by song, and then Pastor Barbara will come with the word. So expect a miracle today in Jesus' name. Amen. prayer for a headache. How's that headache doing? I feel wonderful. Amen. Praise God. Well, Lord, you know, we've had church service here this morning. It started before we even got started. Uh, but I, uh, I'm so thankful for the presence of the Lord. And uh, I will invite you, if you don't have a home church, uh, we're at 2800 uh, Military Road here in Benton. And we welcome you and love for you to come. It's just different to get to come and be in the presence than it is just to be a, a watch live stream. Uh, you know, we have a tendency uh, when we watch live stream, we'll 
uh, get us a cup of coffee or whatever and go, go sweep the floor and work around and do stuff while it's running. But in, in the house, when you're in church, in service, you get to fellowship with one another and be in the presence of the Lord. And there's just nothing like it. Amen. Amen. All right. Are we ready to get in the Word? Swords in the air. This is my Bible. It's God's holy word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught the word of the living God. Faith will come because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. What does it say on the screen? There's no time like the present. And uh, you know when the Lord dropped that in me a couple of days ago uh, about our time, um, that... Uh, uh, especially for those of us who love the Lord and, you know, we're on go. We want to see th the mighty things that the Lord does. That we get so caught up with what we're going to be doing and where we're going and what's going to be happening. Although, you know, I'm a pastor that teaches you to start making plans and preparation. And uh, actually, October's a good month. Uh, and that last quarter of the year, do you plan to be successful next year? Do you plan to be going forward or backward? Do you plan on purpose to have more than enough? Do you plan to have owe less and own more? You have to make those decisions. You say, well, I'm just praying about it, and I'm just praying and waiting for God. But see, God gave you wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and he gave you the power of the blood, the power of the Holy Ghost, and the authority and dominion over all the powers of darkness. And so then that leaves it up to you to make decisions and begin to put your hands to something. God said, if you put your hands to it, I'll bless it. Yes. Amen. 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 And so we have to start planning and preparing. You say, well, I've been through a lot this year. Well, everybody's been through a lot. And you sure can't let that deter or hinder what your plans are. Uh, and I like to say it like this. If we thought, if we knew that at midnight tonight we were going to draw our last breath, today we would make a decision. We wouldn't let anyone or anything take away the joy of being alive. Can I get an amen in the house? We wouldn't be sitting worried about uh, next month or do we need to buy a new car or do we need to try to pay the house off or what do we need to do? No, we wouldn't be worried about that because we would get the joy out of this day for being alive and well. Amen? Amen. And so if we'll practice that, then our days run into weeks, weeks run into month, and then one of these days you'll be getting on somebody's nerves because you're so happy all the time. Amen. Amen. That's how it works. But today we're going to talk about, and I'm telling you, I, I really prayed last night and even this morning I, 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 as I was doing around in the house, I, I was I praying, Lord, help me, give me the wisdom to get this message out because it's a very vital message for where we're at in this season of time. And so, uh, the the uh, the first book that we're going to go to is Psalms. We're going to go to Psalms, uh, but I want to say this that uh, there that and if you want to write jot this down, you can. There is nothing more important. Say nothing. nothing. Nothing more important than what you are doing now. Not going to or did, but there is nothing more important than what you are doing now. Say now is now. now, is now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I really don't think, I, I don't think we truly understand the importance of the present, the, this, this present time. And so if there's anything that, that, uh, that I truly believe that we want to get imparted to you today is the importance of right now. Of right now, because see, we look at our government. Our government is so topsy turvy right now. You know, we just think, "Good Lord, what else?" 
And, uh, and, you know, we look at, uh, at this COVID, it's raging around the world. We look at, we can look at all these things and we start looking, uh, you know, well, maybe uh, the next, uh, the, the, uh, in the next few years, this and this and this, and uh, maybe that and that and that. But we've got to keep our, our focus on what, let's say this out loud, what am I doing right now? Let's do that again. What am I doing right now? Okay, now not to take away from planning and preparing because I truly believe that you should live every day as if it was your last, but you should make plans. And what I mean by that is don't go out and blow your savings just because you think, well, I'm going to live it up today because you've got a tomorrow. And and, amen, amen. And so we make plans like we're going to live forever, but we live each day as if it's our last. Is is that good sound doctrine? Amen. That's That's a Barbara doctrine. Amen. All right, so let's turn to um, let's turn to Psalms. Uh, we're going to go in Psalms forty six, and uh, we're going to get we're going to dig deep in here today. So just hang with me. Uh, Psalms forty six, and um, we're actually going to get all of Psalms, all of the whole chapter, and so I'm going to read it <laughs> because uh, I looked up the word present, a uh, present time. Uh, because God said uh, in verse 1, God said, say God said. God said. God said that he is a very present help in trouble. He's a very present help in trouble. And, and we have a tendency that when trouble comes that we start uh, looking for God. We start trying to find God. We start trying to figure out where he is or pray or get somebody else to pray. But you need to get an understanding today that God, say this out loud, God is with me. me. Even when I'm in trouble. Okay, okay. And so I looked up present and it said um, to come forth, to appear, to appear or exist. Present means that you're existing. Isn't that good that right this moment you're existing? Yes, yes, that, that it said to, uh, <clears throat> to attain uh, and to be enough. Say this out loud, right now, right now. I, am I am enough. Okay, okay. And, um, and so then I looked up, uh, that was in the Hebrew, and then I looked up in Webster, and Webster said, I love this, being at this time, being at this time, not past, and not future, but being right here, right now. I have my being right here, right now. So I am in, say that loud, I'm in present tense right now. Okay, so no, we're, not, we're not going to think about what happened yesterday, and we're not worried about what we're going to look at tomorrow, but we're going to look at present tense, okay? All right, here we go. Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. We are the bride of Christ, and he is in the midst of us, and we will not be moved. Now listen, you cannot let yourself be moved if you see the mountain shake and quake. If, you see, if tomorrow you saw bombs falling in America, and you didn't know what to do, you cannot, you cannot allow yourself to get off in fear. But you've got to, if you don't get nothing else, you need to get Psalms 46 in your belly today to know that no matter what God is with me and he will not let me be moved he's going to keep me in the time of trouble until he comes to get me out of this place amen can we see God in that light today God is in the midst of her she shall not be moved God shall help her and that right early the heathen raged 
The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He, he uh, burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still, be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. See, what I'm telling you today is there's a lot of heathen raging today. When I say heathen, I mean those that are lost. If you don't know God, you are heathen. You know, I'm not going to make it pretty. Yeah, but Sister Barbara, I'm a good person. And I'm planning on going to heaven because I'm a good person. Well, your plans have been canceled. Because without Jesus... You're not going to heaven. You can build all the orphanages. You can give to, to give until you have no more to give. You can go sit with the sick, visit, visit the hospitals. You can do all kinds of good things. Be a wonderful neighbor, a good father, and a good mother, a good auntie, brother, sister. But without Jesus Christ, you are destined for a place that is without God, that is separated from God, and that place is called eternal hell and damnation and so your goodness and, and all that you can do is not going to get you there God is saying to us today be still and know that I am God but he's telling me that he's going to be exalted among the heathen boy I love it we win do you hear me today we win we win verse 11 the Lord of hosts is with us the Lord of hosts is with us The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Okay, so now then we've established, although the, let me go back up here. Although the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, and though the waters roar and be troubled, and though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, and you know you can uh, you can turn on any kind of uh, of information about the earth and how this is melting, and it's going to cause that to happen, and how this over here is going on, and it's going to have an effect on on this and that, and and there's uh, there's all the time tornadoes and hurricanes. And, and there's all kinds of stuff. But if, if you can just get in yourself today, though I can see all that, although I know that there's trouble in the earth, in the earth that's going on, the Bible says that the earth groans and travails awaiting for the sons of God to manifest themselves. Listen, if you're looking for peace, Jesus came, he said, I didn't come to set peace. I come to set variance. He came to defend the things, the very things that was against our Father God. Amen. Amen. And uh, and so what we got to know is, let's say this out loud. According to Psalms 46, God is with us. Now, do we believe that? Amen. And I'm going to tell you something else that I want you to start doing. Because uh, this little church, we pray for a lot of people and a lot of people get miracles and healings and, you know, that we don't even tell you about. Uh, but I, I want you to start acting like that the Word of God is true. I just want you to act like it. Even if you don't believe it right now, I want you to start acting like it. You say, well, what do you mean by that, Sister Barbara? Okay, I'm going to show you this. The th- this, this come to me. That uh, when we pray for people, when we pray for someone that's, uh, that's really got something bad going on, I mean really bad, we don't act like, we don't act like the Lord heard us. We don't act like we truly believe. You know, okay, I'll say cancer because everybody knows someone or, or something, you know, cancer. And we'll pray for somebody with cancer. And uh, how many times do we start doing this after we pray? Oh, thank you, Father, for healing them. Woo! Thank you, Lord. They no longer have cancer. According to your word, getting excited. Can you get excited about somebody getting cured of cancer? But you know what we do? Well, we pray and we're done. And we hope they get all right. But when we truly believe, when you truly believe that with everything that you got, that the person you just prayed for has received a miracle from God, something's going to break loose. Do you understand? 
Something's going to break loose. You're going to get excited. You're going to run. You're going to jump. You say, yeah, but Sister Barbara, I don't know. Then you don't have faith. But I'm telling you when, you, when you believe, my dad used to say, Barbara, all it takes is he said, if you ask in my name and you believe, you shall have what you ask. And when we start believing it, we're going to act like it. Amen. I can tell you this, when the Lord, when the Lord healed me of emphysema, I couldn't wait. I, listen, I told everybody everywhere I went. Okay, so here's what happened. And boy, I'd start telling them, listen, the elevator's great. No, I'm not playing. If you get somebody in the elevator, you, you've got some. You know, they can't get off till they get to their floor. And then just start them. Just say, just look at them. Do you know Jesus? No, well, you know, and they, they look at you like you're, you know. And just say, well, listen, i got to tell you something he did for me. See, what he did for me. I, 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 the doctors told me I never have five years to live. Man couldn't do for me what Jesus did for me. Jesus healed me of emphysema. Oh, hallelujah. I got good lungs. Woo, hallelujah. How I many, when's the last time you got excited about a miracle that Jesus Christ, nobody could do for you but Jesus? Do you, see, do you hear what I'm saying today? We get excited to ball games. Come on. We get excited about the little stuff our kids does. Brings tears. We get all excited. But you know what? It's time that the church acts like the Bible's true. Amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to leave that with you. Turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. Verse 4. Now, we're going to tarry here a minute because there's something. There's, this is my main message. What I'm going to preach on today is Matthew 24. And I pray, Father, I pray that I be filled with the wisdom of your word, that we get this broken down today. We get it in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. See, let me tell you this. You, if you don't know the word, and if you're not following, and I love something Lisa said when she was preaching. Uh, boy, and if you have not heard Wednesday night's yeah. message... I'm telling you, you need to hear Wednesday night's message. She was on fire. And you may tell you something. I can say this because I know that she had a battle going in, on in her body that nobody but she and Jesus knows. And let me tell you, it didn't affect that powerful word at all, did it? Woo, it was mighty. But I like something she says. Get your Bible and go along with whoever you're hearing and make absolutely sure that you're hearing what the word says. Because see, here's what Jesus is saying. He said, many shall come in my name saying I am Christ. Just because that someone says that, that Jesus is Christ and he is the Lord, the rest of what they're saying can be deception. I'm going to say that. I'm just going to step on out there and say this. That if you are listening to, to ministers or friends or family, and they tell you that Jesus, no, that there is no more healing in this day, it was done away with, get away from them as fast as you can. Amen. If you are listening and hearing, I don't care who it is, ministers on TV or, or your next door neighbor, and they're telling you there is no such thing as being filled with the Holy Ghost with speaking in tongues because it was only on the day of Pentecost. Get away from them and stop listening. Because this Bible is full of, I can take you there, after the day of Pentecost, after they were filled with the Holy Ghost every day and speaking in tongues, when the preachers were hot on fire and going into cities and they would begin to tell them about the Holy Ghost and they would go, we, we don't know of a Holy Ghost. 
We, we don't know. We've not heard. And they would start preaching it to them, and the whole place get filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence speaking in tongues. So let's say this out loud. It has not been done away with. It is a gift of God that he wants me to have. Because listen, in the days that we're in, and I'm going to say this, in this hour that we're in, you better be filled up and prayed up and on go all the time. And I'm going to say this, that the Lord has really stirred me with a hunger to get deep in some things that I'm, I'm going to teach. I can't teach it yet, but I'm going to teach about things transpiring and where we are. It's an exciting time for the church, but if you're not full, if you're just, just kind of in and out, hanging here and there, listen, it's not for you. This is for the church. The church that's on fire and that's, 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 that's on go and that's looking for Jesus to come. That's who this is for, that, I, that the Lord's fixed to have me teach shortly. Okay, so Jesus said, For many shall come in my name saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. So just because they're saying he's Christ, I'm going to keep saying this. Get your Bible, and you make sure what you're hearing is truth. And can I say this? Just because I go to, to a, a, a restaurant that has buffet, it doesn't mean I eat everything on that buffet. I will eat what's right for me and the rest of it can be left on that plate. And that's what you need to do when you hear something that don't go along with this word. Amen? Amen. Now, you don't throw the person away. Come on now. All right, here we go. Verse 6. And you shall hear, hear of wars and rumors of wars, seeing, see that you be not troubled. Are we hearing of stuff going on right now in Afghanistan? Is that very troubling? Can I tell you this? I know that that episode is written in this book. See, I know that. And I know, I, I know I'm fixing to get some, some depth of studying that's at that because the Lord's calling me there, you know. But it's written in this book about what's going on right now. But Jesus is, is telling us something here. He said, he said, now listen, you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that, see that. In other words, on purpose, make sure that you're not troubled about that. Because, can I tell you this? I don't have time to give you the whole Bible today. But there are many places in here that says, in the latter days, in those last days, men's hearts are going to fail them because of fear. Because if you don't know that you've got God with you, if you don't know that God's going to take care of you, if, if whatever, if this world turned upside down, the mountains started being uh, pushed off into the ocean and things started happening that's uh, totally out of your control. If you don't know that you know that you know that you've got God with you, then listen, you'll be with that bunch that's scared to death trying to find the rocks and the mountains to cover them and hide them. But I'm telling you, there's a resting place in Jesus today. And if there's anything he wants us to get across, that Jesus Christ is Lord uh, Afghanistan's not Lord Satan's not Lord but Jesus Christ is Lord and, and today he's taking care of his own yes. amen. amen see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass all these things must come to pass see it's written it's written it was prophesied all these things must come to pass but the end's not yet let's say that out loud the end's not yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes and divers places is that going on it has been going on now for many years can we say that's been fulfilled what Jesus said to us okay verse 8 all these are the beginning of sorrows so when you see this, that's the beginning of something. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. 
and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's talking about you're going to be hated because you're a Christian. Can I tell you, we've got family members right now that don't want to have anything to do with us because we're Christians. But can I tell you, let God be God. And you follow your God. And when, you're, when you need a miracle, let's see if your, your pagan God can do anything for you. How about that? Amen. Verse 10. And then, and then, Shall many be offended? Because, okay, let's keep going. They'll deliver you up and, and they'll turn against you. And then shall many be offended and shall be true. Look at this. Now, he's not talking to the world here. They're going to be offended and then they're going to betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall Deceive many. Do you know what a prophet is? A prophet is someone who can foretell things that are happening. It didn't say some followers of Baal. It didn't say some followers of Demar. Can I say this to you? Did you know? And I'm just going to say this, you know, because I'm going to put it out there. During this last administration, there were many prophets who said that the current president was going to get it again. That God had told them. Many prophets said that. Many Christians said, I know because I heard God in my prayer closet. But I don't know if you noticed or not, your pastor didn't say none of that stuff. Do you know why? Because on my face, in my prayer closet, I saw by the Spirit the bear rise up. And the bear was looking around in authority. And I knew right then that we were fixing to change presidents. But nobody wanted to hear that. But this, but Jesus said to us, thousand, look here, he said, many false prophets shall rise. Not maybe, not might be, shall rise and shall deceive many. In verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, can I tell you I've never seen sin raging as it is raging in this earth right now? That, that people that would shock you that are calling good bad and bad good. I went into a store yesterday that honest to goodness, I never bought a thing there. I had to get out of there because what I was seeing literally made me sick to my stomach. In this hour, if there's anything that I can get in this church is you cannot wait to go find somebody to pray for you. You cannot be that person that is riding the church bench today and three days in the world. You have got to get this word in your belly so that you be able to carry out and do the thing. See, we're not in survival mode. We're in victory mode. And to be victorious, you've got to be okay with laying your life on the line. you got to be okay with saying, yes, God, as long as I breathe, I will. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, you got to be okay with getting to that place. Yeah, but what if my children turn on me? Well, you know what? Let them turn on you because, listen, they're going to face God just like you are. They're going to stand before God. Don't stop praying for them. Don't don't stop fighting the devil for him and don't stop believing for him. But listen, every man in this earth has got a right to say yes or no to, to Christ and you got to be on point with him. Amen. Do you hear me today? Yeah, but Sister Barbara, I just don't know if I can do that. No, you can't. That's why God gave us the Holy Ghost to stand up and to be filled with his spirit in power in this earth and realm in this hour. Amen. Verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, which is going on right now, worse than I've ever seen. Here we go. The love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. Verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 
But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Now I'm going to stop right there because I want to teach you something. When he said the end shall come, that means of that age. So I'm going to break this down for you in this book. When he was talking about what you're seeing and what you're going to see, and false prophets rising up, there were two subjects that Jesus was teaching on in the Matthew 24. One was he was about to go to the cross and the season was about to change. This earth would never be the same again. Nothing would be the same once that Jesus went to the cross. In fact, if you'll look over in uh, verse 34 and 35, it says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. When Jesus was setting up his kingdom, a kingdom that cannot be seen with the natural eye. So in, in, in places here, Jesus was talking about that he's about this era, this season of time is about to change because he's about to start setting up the new kingdom. See, his kingdom couldn't be set up. When he said to Peter, he said, now, Peter, uh, on this, I'm, you know, I'm going to build my church. But he had to go to the grave and he had to be resurrected for the new era. Old things pass away. All things become new. He had to die and be resurrected for the kingdom of God to be set up. So when he's talking about, about setting up of the kingdom, see in verse um, 34, when it said, This generation shall, there are some standing here that they'll not pass till they, until all these things be fulfilled. He's talking about the setting up of his kingdom. In other words, there were people standing there that day listening to Jesus that they were going to see. Because, see, let me say this to you, and you can read this uh, in, in Matthew 24, and I'm not going to have time to give you all this today because I've got a lot to give you. And uh, that the Lord coming in his kingdom, it said there'll be some here that they're not going to they're, they're pass away until they see this fulfilled, the Lord coming in his kingdom, which meant they were going to still be alive when Jesus went to the cross and died and was resurrected and then prayed to the Father to send the Holy Ghost. These people were going to literally see this transpire happening with their eyes. Okay, so now that is the, the coming of Jesus setting up his kingdom. In other words, dying and being resurrected. And now in other parts, he's talking about his next coming. And his next coming, because this kingdom has been being set up, has it? Yes. This kingdom has been passed down generation to generation to generation. And it has been being set up all this time. But now we are down to the place of looking for his next coming. Okay, look in uh, verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east... And shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Look at verse 42. Let's also read verse 42 out loud. You ready? Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. And so now, he, has he been made Lord of Lords? Is he king of all kings? Yes. Is he seated in authority and dominion at the right hand of God? Yes. Are we his body? Yes. Are we seated where he's seated? Yes. yes. 
And so now we don't know. No man knows the coming of, of the second coming. And see, if you're not careful, you'll read verse 34 and say, well, it's, it's already over with. It's already come. But that's not true. He's talking about that there'll be some standing here that they're going to get to see the kingdom set up. In other words, they're going to see me die and be resurrected. That's what he was said. Did we get that? Did we get that? Okay. And then, um, and then vo- uh, verse 36 uh, through 42. Here we go. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But, okay, now here's how us to know. Here's how, how we are to know of the second coming. But as the days of Noah were... So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, say before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered to the ark. So I'm going to ask you something. During that day, before the flood, was life as normal? And it came all of a sudden? Life is going to be as normal, but if I, I'm telling you as I'm standing here before you today, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, Jesus Christ is going to break the clouds, and he is going to take his family out of here, and woe unto those who are left in this earth. And let me tell you, Most of the tears are going to be falling from the church world that didn't love him enough to dedicate to him. Because you say, yeah, but I believe once saved, always saved. Well, where'd you get that at? I'd like to know, where did you get that at? Because the Bible is full of, it said, even said that while Jesus walked in the earth, that there were a lot of them got offended and fell away from him that were believers. Can you fall away from grace? You better believe it because this thing is by faith. By faith. And I believe this. I believe that that at the the, the coming of Jesus, there'll be more prayers prayed than's ever been prayed in the history in this earth. Those who knew they should have, would have, could have, wished they would have. It said just how it is. It said, in fact, it said they were all married, giving in marriage. They were just living, doing their thing. Oh, oh, no, I'm not in the mood to go to church today. I'm going to go to the lake. No, well, I'll go next Sunday. I'll give God a, a, you know, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pray my prayer at nighttime before I go to bed, before I lay down. Now lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. I'm going to pray my prayer, and then I'm going to go live my life like I want to. But I'm telling you right now. We're on the brink of a new season. See, this is talking about the end of the age. When Jesus was teaching them that day, he was teaching them this age is about to end. And, and uh, can I tell you that the prophets prophesied about Jesus? All through the Old Testament, they prophesied about Jesus. And so those prophecies, those prophecies were coming to pass in this generation that I'm telling you about. In their eyes, it came to pass. There are prophecies that the prophets prophesied that in our generation we're watching it come to pass. Have you ever thought about this? That before this 20th century, everything remained the same for thousands and thousands of years. They rode horses, camels, they had wagons. They didn't have water in the house, they went to the wells. For thousands of years, it never changed. But then all of a sudden, in the 20th century, look at our change. We have phones that we can talk around the world in a moment. We have trains that can go fast as light. We have airplanes that can fly you anywhere, everywhere. We have TVs, radios, computers. I could go on and on and on. That all has happened in this 20th century. But the Bible says in the last days that they will become smarter and smarter. 
that they are, they are wise and smarter. Could you now say that we're in the last days? I mean, there's your one sign. I could stand here and give you prophecies of prophecies over and over. I don't want to take my time giving them to you. You can go over in the Old Testament. You can look a lot of them up in the book of Daniel, Ezekiel. You can find them in Ezekiel. You can find it in Isaiah. I'm giving you books of prophets that you can go find things that are going to. Remember this one. I saw a great bird. It sounded like chariots and it had people in its mouth. He didn't know what an airplane was because in their day and time, they'd had the same thing for thousands of years. He was seeing an airplane. Has that prophecy come to pass? Give me an amen like you mean it. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so when Jesus is telling us here, these are the signs of the end of time. These are signs. In verse uh, 36 Uh, 37, 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then... Shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. In other words, they're going to be working side by side. And all of a sudden, one is gone. Just gone. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other one left. One's ready, one's not. Verse 42 Watch therefore. What's he saying to us? Watch therefore. Read the signs. Stop playing church. Read the signs. Watch therefore. For you know not what hour your Lord doth come. And then he gives a he gives illustration. You need to read the whole book, chapter 24. Matthew 24. Read it this week. Read it this week. So in verse 33 and 34. He was telling them about the resurrection, in the resurrection, that, that the coming of his kingdom was coming. And then in verse 36 through 42, he's talking about the second coming. Now look at Matthew chapter 6. Are, are we getting this? Yes. Okay. Matthew chapter 6. You know what? I wanna, uh, I'm going to flip over to Daniel. Y'all can uh, go ahead and get, I find Matthew chapter 6. But I want to read you something out of Daniel. One verse. Daniel 12 verse 11. I'll just read it to you. You ready? And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. That is exactly three and a half years. Do you know do you know how long Jesus walked this earth and ministered? I'm sorry, what was that? Three and a half years. Daniel prophesied Jesus right there. When the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. Up until Jesus, they had to sacrifice animals, did they not? But when Jesus came, was that taken away? And the abomination that maketh desolate set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred ninety days. Three and a half years. So the book of Daniel is one of the books that gives us of, of the forthcoming of Jesus Christ. Now, Matthew chapter six, uh, 16. Is everybody there except me? Matthew chapter 16. Uh, what did I give you? Six, 16. Matthew 16. I'm sorry, I gave it to you wrong while ago. 16, verse 27 and 28. Two verses we're going to get. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with with his angels. 
And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his what? Kingdom. In his kingdom. And so this is talking about when he comes out of the grave and that he sets up his kingdom because if you look at verse 27, it said, And then he shall reward every man according to his works. He's going to, he's, in other words, we've got things to do. I was called to pastor a church right here in Benton. Here I am. Here I am doing what he's called me to do. And he says, again, he said, there'll be some. But you understand that the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, when he comes the second time to carry us, uh, to take us out of here, there is going to be great tribulation poured out upon this earth. That he is our escape. Yes. Don't we understand him that? He's not coming at that point to set up the kingdom. When he killed when he came up out of the grave, when he came up out of the grave and the disciples, 12 men, were looking for him to set up in the natural a kingdom over there in Jerusalem, in the Holy Land. But Jesus was trying to get them to hear what he was saying. Look, I'm setting up the kingdom and what I'm setting it up, I'm giving you to, to, to do your work, giving you rewards of what you're going to be doing. He was setting up of that supernatural kingdom that was not set up by man's hands but it's set up by God and that kingdom's been growing ever since that day. Now then the second time he comes. Okay, Lord can I give all this to them today? The second time that he comes is that he's coming to rapture us out if you will. To, to He will be our way of escape. He will come and, and he will take us out and take us to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Yes. We will be with him for a thousand years or whatever. I don't know. I, you know I'm, I'm, I know there's some things about reigning with him a thousand years. But, but here's what's going to happen. He's going to carry us out. We're going to go be with him. And we're going to party, honey. We're going to party. All the stuff we walked through. All the things we had come against us. All the lies that was told on us. All the little of us. All the times that we stood by faith when we didn't feel like standing but we stood anyway all of that we're going to be partying hard with Jesus and while we're there in our party all listen if you if you're left in this earth I feel sorry for you because there's a description of the things that are going to be poured out vials angels of God that will begin to pour stuff out into this earth that man will scream and beg to for death but it says death will flee from him that he can't even and find death during that time. It would behoove you, you and I to go on and get filled up with his word and be ready when he comes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then uh, once that, that takes place, then we're going to come back. And now we're going to talk about ruling and reigning. So when you read in there and it talks about he is setting up on the Mount of Olives and he's, he's ruling. That's when he brings us back with him. We will come back with him and we will rule and reign this earth, this earth, the old. Listen, and it says we'll have a new heaven, a new earth. Are you excited about that? Boy, I am. I'm excited to know that in the place that I'm going to live and that I'm going to be, I'm not going to have briars on my roses that I can pick a whole, a whole vase full and they'll be sweet to my, to my smell. They'll be beautiful. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be? Won't it be worth it all? It'll be worth it all. So stand in your faith. Don't you move. You stand on the Word. Don't you be sidetracked. Don't you be deceived by those that say, oh yeah, he is Jesus the Lord. Now come and let's all, you know, do whatever. No. No, don't be deceived. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, listen, this, this is exciting to me. This is very exciting to me to know where we're at. 
when he said this about the, the kingdom, setting up the kingdom, he started it when he prayed to the Father to send them the Holy Ghost. And can I tell you, 12 men got on fire, filled up and on fire, and began to turn this world upside down. They laid a foundation for us. A foundation. Twelve stones in that foundation. Oh, I believe, I believe in that foundation. There's one that says Matthew and Mark and Luke. And oh, there's John laid the foundation for us. And then they tried to kill John. They couldn't kill him. They tried to boil him in oil. He wouldn't die. He just wouldn't die. They said, get us, you just get him off of here. So they took him out to the Isle of Patmos. Just get him out of our face. We don't want to see him anymore. We can't kill him. Just get rid of him. And they took him and dumped him off on the Isle of Patmos. And he began to write the book of Revelation. Woo! Hallelujah! I'm talking about a right now God and I'm talking about the importance of who you are and what you are doing in this present time. Are you getting full of the word? Are you praying more? Are you making sure that your sins are forgiven? Are you making sure you're right with God? And let me tell you another thing. Get a hold on those children. I, my mama used to say it like this. Usually they go over fool's hill when they're about 14. Between 14 and 16, you're wondering who in the world is that in my house? Because that can't be my daughter. That can't be my son. They are crazier than a nut. Wanting to run the streets, wanting to do all kinds of things. But here's what my mother said. She said, tighten the reins. You just tighten the reins, and after they turn about 16, 17, they'll come back. You wake up one day, oh my gosh, they're there. that's my daughter there. That's, that's my son. They're acting normal now. So my advice to you parents, in this era of time that we're living in, everything's right. Everything's okay. Every, every disgusting sin is right. But let me tell you, when this word was written, it has not changed. And if it was wrong in God's day, it is wrong today. And you get that, that rain and you tighten that thing and you let them know long as you eat my food and you got your feet under my table and you sleeping in my bed, you're not bringing that junk up in my house. Can I get an amen in the house? Let's be parents instead of buddies. Your kids, Lord, why am I having to say all this? Boy, your kids have got friends at school or at wherever they're at, their jobs. They don't need you to be their friends. They need you to be their parents. And parents tell you when you can and when you can't. Well, now, Sister Barbara, mine's all grown up now. They're just living here. Can I tell you that human beings are the only one to let their kids live with them after they're grown? Yeah. <laughs> it's the only one. Go look at the animal kingdom. Do you see grown dogs with their grown pups living with them? Do you see eagles? Well, honey, are, you know, we're going to have to make a bigger nest now. Look at this. They're all grown up. There's not room for us now. No, let me tell you what they do. They make the nest uncomfortable. Huh? Maybe it's time for you to make the nest uncomfortable. Then all of a sudden when the nest gets uncomfortable, they're ready to fly off. Huh? Isn't that how it is? See, I'm meddling now. I'm giving you a little bit of meddling. But it's time for us... It's time for us to follow the word. And, and I can tell you this, you know, I don't believe in beating a child. In fact, you'll, you'll have me on you. If I ever see you beating a child, I will be on you in a heartbeat. If I see you abusing her, and I'm going to tell you this, I was so proud. I was at a, a, a store, uh, I believe it was Friday. Yeah, it was Friday. And uh, 
I was actually not in the store. I was in the parking lot talking to my sister. And uh, I saw a, a two ladies come out and get in the car in front of me. And I'm, I'm talking to my sister. And, and uh, so then I see the car, uh, this same car is in the parking lot is now behind me, parked right behind me. And the lady who was driving, she's out, she's on her phone, and she's over here looking inside another car. And uh, I, at first I thought, you know, maybe there was something bad fixing to happen, so I better keep watching if I need to call the police. And so she'd go over and she'd look in the window and she's still on the phone. And, and uh, so I told my sister, I said, I, I need to get off the phone because I need to see, I, they, I, there's some people here that may need my help in this parking lot. So I got out and walked up there to, to find out that this car was still running and there was a little five-year-old girl in the car alone. And her mother was in the store shopping. Now, the little girl didn't know how to turn the car off. But somehow she got the window down to be able to talk to this woman. And from her conversation, that's not the first time that's happened to that little girl. And this woman, I am so glad. Do you know what most people do? Well, I didn't want to get involved. She got involved 911. And I told her how much I appreciated her stepping up to the plate and making it happen. And the police officer said, you stay with them, stay with that child until I can get there. And can I tell you that if all of us, say all of us, all of us. would get more involved See, when I, when I say to this church, you got to be willing to lay your life on the line. You got to be willing to step out of your little comfort zone. You got to be willing. You got to be willing to be that one that's going to make that call. To be that one that, you know, uh, me and Jackie, we were driving down the road one time, and there was a, a man, that guy, he, he had uh, he uh, barreled real fast and almost hit us. He, he, and then whipped in, and he was just all over the road. Jackie called the state police and gave him his, his license plate number. You said, well, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Why do you not want somebody to get in trouble when you know they're doing wrong? Let's all say this out loud. Right is right. right, is right. And wrong is wrong. wrong. And if I can do something about it, I'm going to. Are we going to be troublemakers against the kingdom of darkness? Yes. Amen. This is where we're at. Okay. Last verse. Galatians 1. And everybody stand. Find it. Stand. I'll give you a minute to find it. Amen. Have you got prayer requests, Jeff? Okay. Okay, so um, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look them dead in the eyes. And tell them, this is for you. This is for you. All right, did you tell your neighbor? Okay. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, and we're going to read it together. You ready? Everybody ready? We're going to read together. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Amen. What did he say? To deliver us. To deliver us. You know what? When I was pregnant with, with my daughters, I was pregnant until I delivered them. And once I delivered them, I was done. I didn't have to do that anymore. And he's telling us something today. 
that what he did was to deliver us, to take us out of that darkness. Are we excited? Are we excited that we're living in the season of time that just, I'm telling you, and I'm going to be giving you more. This is just a little, a little beginning of what the Lord's going to have me to begin to teach here about this present time. Did we, did we get this today? I mean, it wasn't boring, was it? Well, okay, good, good. All right. Yeah, bring it on down, Phil. And, um, and so we just need to know uh, that this is an exciting time for us but not for the world. Amen. You need to understand that. Now then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say this. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, we've got prayer requests here that um, one is uh, for Leo all red. His red and white blood cells are low. Also, depression, no energy. And uh, you know what? I find that because uh, I've had him on my heart for this whole week. This whole week, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know how, how the Lord will just bring somebody to you. And, uh, and then uh, Deborah Rogers, uh, pray for her daughter, Katina, Katina, and grandson, Tyler. They both have covid so we've got two out with COVID. We've got one with his blood cells low and no energy and depression. And you say, well, when we pray, do you believe that God not only hears, but he'll answer us? Yes. Yes, amen. Y'all ready? Okay, let's pray. First one's Leo all red. Ready? Pray. Father, thank you that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Just want to thank you for that. I want to thank you, Father, that your love, your love supersedes all of the hatred that is in this earth. I just want to thank you that your love abounds above and beyond all that we could even imagine. And Lord, I ask you today for healing and deliverance for Leo Allred. Lord, let the Holy Spirit fall upon him as in times ago. Breaking every yoke of bondage and setting him free. Lord, I thank you for healing in his blood. Healing and health and wholeness. And Satan, I come against you and I bind you in the name of Jesus. Do not allow you. I do not allow you authority in this matter. But in Jesus' name, I command you to get your claws out of his mind and his emotions. And I call him set free today. Today. Today, he is set free in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for it right now. Hey, I praise you for it, Lord. Woo, glory. I praise you, Father, that you hear us. Hey, you hold them of a sudden and of a to hold you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for hearing, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, right now we lift up uh, uh, Katina and her son Tyler. And Lord, we come against the spirit of COVID. You spirit of devourer. You spirit of darkness. I command you to loose your holds on this, on this mother and son. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, you loosen in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you for the ministry of healing right now. Health and healing and restoring and a restoring back what the canker worm came to eat. And I praise you. Woo, glory. I praise you for it, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My goodness. 
Reach out and touch, touch the Lord, Lord as He goes by. by. You will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He is passing by this moment. Your needs He'll supply. So reach out. actually gave it to me I want to say yesterday it was either yesterday morning or the day I believe it's yesterday morning uh, that he's fixed to place you in a new position and uh, and in that position it's a position of authority and it's a position and a place of wealth and uh, and he just wanted me uh, to remind you that you say this a lot. You need to know whose you are. But God's got this. And, uh, and this place that he's fixing to set you in. And when I say a place of wealth. And uh, he said to uh, seek him for wisdom. That you know how to handle and what to handle. What to do and what not to do. But for you to seek God. And he will give you step by step. And, and uh, details. The Lord says to tell you He will give you details. And when He gives you the details, it doesn't matter where you're at or what you're doing, get a pen and paper and write it down. And when you write the details down, and then you will come to a place that you will see step by step what you're to do, not to do, and the details of that. And uh, so just prepare yourself. That's what He's saying to you today. Just prepare yourself for this place. How, ooh, boy, I'm telling you, boy, isn't it wonderful being in the presence of the Lord today? Amen. And you know, when we see these things coming upon the earth, he said, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. Isn't that exciting? Amen. All right. Uh, is, there, is there any other request in the house before we let you go? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. For them, for the children. Uh, let's see, where's my scripture that I have for children? Is it Daniel? Daniel chapter 3? Is that, is that our scripture? Let me look. Let's see, my Bible's still up here. Um, yes, it's, uh, it's not God's will for children to be tor tormented. Amen? Amen. And especially in a house of God. You, you guys have a house of God, house of prayer. 
Uh, yes, amen. Let's see. Let me see. I think it's Daniel 3. Let me look. Let me see if that's it. If that's not it, I'll get it to you after church. It is in Daniel, but I'm not sure where the verse is. But I'll get it to you after church. Uh, but there's a scripture about your children and them uh, uh, being smart and their and their beauty. Huh? Daniel 1. It's Daniel 1. See, my, I, knew my, I was waiting on my Bible scholar to tell me, and he wasn't telling me. Do, y'all, do you have any idea what it is to live with a walking Bible? Okay, Daniel 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 4. And I'm going to read this for uh, Paige and Tyler's children. And that's all of their children. All of those present and those to come. (laughs) I I knew I'd get her attention then. (laughs) Okay, so... Uh, here we go, Daniel chapter one, verse four, and uh, and I'm gonna pray. Uh, we're gonna pray this together because remember we've been learning how to pray the word, haven't we? Up in the house, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans, which means they have the ability to learn other languages than their own. If I got anybody in the house in agreement with me for our children in this house for this work. Amen. Now what what scripture is it? Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. That's for our children. Now then, everybody stretch your hand toward these babies, and we're going to pray. Uh, they're not going to have those torturing. Uh, um, uh, oh, and, uh, and also uh, the scripture for sleeping, which is um, Proverbs. Huh? The sweet sleep. And it's in, uh, it's in Proverbs. Um, you did? You, oh, you have it? All right. Start reading it last night, yes. And have, uh, you know, little Blue is big enough now that you can have her repeat after you. So, you know, have her to repeat it. So she is speaking it out loud. Amen? Okay, uh, did you? Okay, 324. Proverbs 324 is for you to sleep, sleep well. Sleep well. Okay, so right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank and praise you that your word is real and alive. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. Satan, you're a liar. You have nothing. You have nothing to do with this family. Not nothing. I said nothing. Nothing. And I just want to thank you, Father, for sweet sleep for these children. And, uh, Lord, that their little ears will be deafened to the things they don't need to be hearing. And that their understanding and wisdom will be open for the learning of things they need to learn. And I just want to praise you for that and giving you all honor and call this thing done. And also for mom and daddy. Lord, I thank you for it. Y'all hold each other's hand just for a minute. Lord, I thank you for the peace. The peace and the respect that they have for one another. I just want to thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, and praise you uh, that, yes, that this love that they have, that it blossoms and blooms greater with every year. Lord, when they become old, should this world stand, let them be so in love with each other then that they can't stand to be away from each other a moment. And I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. All right. Hearts clear? Hearts clear? All right. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed coming in and going out. out. And everything everything I put my hands to, to, God causes it to prosper. prosper. Our children children shall marry the right person the first time. time. At At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open. 
to receive knowledge and wisdom and the powerful word of God and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I'm full, filled up, running over with health, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing and nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, I got a, before we, before we go, I got an announcement to make. This Wednesday, say this Wednesday. We have Gabe Hogan and his beautiful bride coming. They're going to do praise and worship and preach up a storm. So if you have, if you can at all, get out here and get in this service and get you some of that. Amen. Amen. Wednesday night at 7. Amen.